Hi, I'm Nate, the Technical Marketing Manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And today I'm going to show you how to use the Red Hat Insights Image Builder to define and deploy your standard operating environment for Red Hat Enterprise Linux on your cloud provider. In today's example, we're going to be using the Microsoft Azure platform. And to get that done, you're going to need a few things. First is you're going to need your login for the hybrid cloud console, of course. So go over to console.redhat.com and sign up for a free account if you don't already have one. The next thing you're going to need is some information from Microsoft Azure, from your Azure portal. You're going to need your tenant ID. You're going to need your subscription ID. And you're going to need the name of the resource group that you want to provision into. Now, these are all specifics you're going to have to get from Azure. So if you don't know how to get those, um, you may want to check Microsoft's documentation. So let's get started. We're going to go to the hybrid cloud console. And I'm going to walk you through the wizard in Image Builder. And we'll talk a little bit about the information you're going to need from Microsoft when we get to it. All right, so here we are at the hybrid cloud console's main page. Um, I've already logged in. If you haven't logged in, of course, you will be brought to the login page. This is pretty self-explanatory. You've got this. So what we need to do first is go to Image Builder. And the way we do that is we go to Services here at the top. And underneath Services, you'll find Inventories, because this brings us an inventory of the images we've already defined in the Hybrid Cloud Console. Go to Images, and this will bring us to the Red Hat Insights Image Builder. Now, you see there's a whole list of things that are already in here, including my own tests from earlier. We're going to make a new image for uh, Microsoft Azure. So let's click Create Image. Now, the first thing we get to do is select what release we'd like to use for our image. We can choose RHEL 8 or RHEL 9, or there's options here for development, right? We can use CentOS Stream 8 or 9, but we're going to choose RHEL 9. Now, we're going to go ahead and pick which uh, cloud provider we want the image to be published to after we're finished. Click Microsoft Azure, because like I said, we're doing that next. Now, it's important to note that you can pick more than one in this list if you want to. So if you, if you also have on-premises things like VMware, you can select the MDK down here. And what that'll do is it'll give you a disk image that you can download and then import into your VMware environment. You can also do things like output an ISO file and use that ISO in a, in a build environment or even put it on a USB stick and plug it into a physical machine and build your machines that way. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to just pick the target cloud provider, Microsoft, Microsoft Azure. So let's hit next. All right, now we need to give it some information about where it should provision to on Microsoft Azure. So this can be a little bit daunting, only because there's some information here that you need to gather from Microsoft uh, in order to plug in here. So you have to already have a Microsoft Azure account I mean, we would assume you've probably already got one anyway. And you need to be able to find the, uh, the information that we're asking for here. Okay, so here's my, uh, my Azure console. Now, from Azure, in order to find your tenant G GUID, you need to go into Azure Active Directory. Now, if it's not in your list of favorites here, or this is obviously I've been here recently, click on this little menu at the side, it might be over here. And if you absolutely can't find it in any of these menus, just search up here for Azure Active Directory. Okay, we're gonna go into there. And right here on this main page, this main screen here, you're gonna see Tenant ID. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to take that, click on this little copy button. Okay, that's what goes in here. Now, the next thing is it's going to authorize Image Builder with your Azure account. So you wanna click the Authorize button. Okay, so we've clicked on that Authorize button, and what that does is it brings us to our Azure portal. From the portal, we need to actually assign the Image Builder service the ability to actually provision this disk image into our Azure account. The way to do that is we need to add the permission to our subscription. Now, we're also going to need the subscription ID, so we're going to have to grab that while we're, while we're in here. So the easiest way to do this is to go to subscriptions within the Azure portal here. I found that the quickest way to do that is to simply go to the search box at the top like I've done here and type in subscriptions and there it is. Let's go to subscriptions. Now you're going to see a list of your subscriptions here. This is that subscription ID we're going to need later. So you can grab that and copy it to your clipboard 
and then in the you want to click on the name of your Azure subscription. Now your subscription may not be named Azure Subscription One like mine is. Could be whatever your organization has named it. Now we need to go into Access Control IAM from within the subscription. And within Access Control, uh, you can see if if I click on Role Assignments, once this loads, you'll see I've got Red Hat Image Builder listed as a contributor. What you need to do is add Red Hat Image Builder as a contributor. The way to do that is to click on this Add button at the top here. I'm going to click Add Role Assignment. Okay, now the role we want to look for here, if we go to Privileged Administrator Roles, you'll see Contributor. We select Contributor. Now we go Members. And they see Selected Role as Contributor. We're going to add a user or principal, right? We're going to go Select Members. And believe it or not, if you just type in here, Red Hat Image Builder, it will autofill, and there's Red Hat Image Builder. Now, obviously, I've already added that, so I'm not going to add it a second time. But once you've selected it, you see how it's under Selected Members here. You click the Select button, and then you'll be able to add it by completing this wizard. Again, since I've already done that, I'm not going to do it again. Let's go back over to Image Builder, which is what we're really here for anyway. Remember, we got that subscription ID. We're going to paste that in here. Now, the resource group, this is another thing that you would have defined within uh, your reserve portal. I'm not going to go through the whole process of showing you where the resource group is. Mine is just called RG1. Boom. Now we're going to hit next. Okay, now, this is back to the, the usual uh, setup for the RHEL image builder. If we want to register our system automatically after it's been built, basically after we provision a new instance with it on Azure, uh, if we want it to automatically register to our Red Hat account, you can tell it to use an activation key here. So we're going to pick an activation key, and this will, within a moment here, auto-populate the activation key. You can choose to register later if you'd like to instead come back and register using automation. It's entirely up to you. We want to hit Next. Now, the file system configuration. Defining the file system is one of the powers of Image Builder, okay? You could just go to your cloud provider and pick RHEL from the list of operating systems that you want to deploy, and it'll come out of the box with a basic default file system. The reason that could be a problem for you is if for compliance reasons, maybe you need separate partitions, like say you need temp to be in its own partition. Maybe you need home to be in its own partition. Maybe you need specific mount options on one of those partitions. Uh, in order to do that, you're going to have to be able to define that partition layout. And this is what Image Builder will let you do. So we're going to click Manually Configure Partitions. Now, we're going to want to pick a mount point and tell it what size we want to add. So you can see the root file system is already here at 10 gigabytes. That's a fine default. Let's click Add. Maybe we'll add temp as its own. There's temp. Maybe we'll make temp like, I don't know, 2 gigabytes. Now let's add, I don't know, home. We don't want home to fill up our file system. So we're going to separate that out. And, you know, there's a bunch of different options here. If you want, say, var as its own partition, you can select that, give it a size. Var should be bigger. Let's make that 10. Now we hit next. Now, package selection. You can pick packages to install by default into the operating system. Uh, maybe you want to have your default Visual Editor installed. So let's search for Vim. We can add Vim Common or Vim Minimal or several of these, right? If you select more than one, it will select all of them. You know, the ones that are highlighted here will then be added, right? Or we can take all those back out. Let's just do Vim Minimal. Now, on a note of adding several packages, let's say we want Apache HTTPD installed. Now, let's just say, as an example, I know you probably wouldn't do this on a production system. As an example, let's say all of the things in this list are things that we want to install on our system. We click the double arrow and it'll put all of them in there. Okay, now we hit next. Now let's give it a name. Nate Azure. If I could type, there we go. And then we hit next. 
And now it gives us a summary. We can look through the different options that we have defined in, uh, in the, the build process here. And once we are satisfied that these things are all the, what we want them to be, we click the Create Image button. If you want to make changes, you can click back on one of the items here on the left-hand side and change what you want to change. But we're just going to take it the way it is and click Create Image. Now, as you can see, the top of our list here is Nate Zur. Here's my image. It says image build is pending. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut the video and I'm going to come back in a little bit once the build is complete. All right, so now we have our images defined. We've submitted them to Image Builder. It puts them into the queue for, you know, the build process to actually occur. This takes anywhere from a couple of minutes to, well, maybe up to 10 minutes or so for these, these builds to complete. And then depending on which output we chose, it'll send it off to our cloud provider. Now, if we chose an option that gives us just a local image, you can then download the image at the end. Uh, but if you chose your cloud provider, it will do the, the process of automatically pushing it over to your cloud provider. And as I'll show you in just a minute, right in the, in the interface there for Image Builder, we can take an action on that image on our cloud provider which is a pretty nice integration. All right, so here we are back at my images list. You can see that Nate Azure is ready to deploy here. You can see that it says that it is built. Nice little green check mark says it's ready. Now, to actually deploy this on Microsoft Azure, we're gonna click on this View Uploaded Image button, and it's gonna bring us right into our Azure portal. All right, so from the Azure portal, you can see right here, this is the image that we just created and uploaded using Image Builder. If we click the Create VM button, it's going to create a new instance right from the image that we just uploaded. All right, so this is all pretty straightforward. This is the, the Azure portal, how you, how you deal with this stuff. So we're going to pick what subscription we want to deploy it in. We're going to tell it what resource group to put it in. Now, if I wanted to move it at this point, I should be able to. Gonna give it a name. Call it new rel instance because I'm really creative. Availability options and whatnot. This is all Azure specific configuration that you can choose to change or not change. The image is what's really important here from my perspective. And that is, you can see it says composer API and then the UUID of the compose build that we just sent over here. Composer in the background is what Image Builder uses to actually create these images. All right, architecture is going to be x64 because that's what RHEL builds against. And again, these are all different options that you can pick from Azure. For access to your system, you're going to want to define which SSH key you want it to use. This will get deployed automatically when the system gets, when the instance gets deployed on Azure. You can tell it what the username is. You can tell it what key pair to use. I'm going to tell it to use an existing key pair that's stored in Azure. And then I'm going to pick my key, Nate's key. And this tells it, this uh, at the bottom here where it says select inbound ports, this is how you can tell it what ports to open to the world. Obviously, if you want to be able to connect to the console over SSH, you're going to have to open that up. And then the rest of this is really um, up to you how you want your image deployed. We're, uh, we're not gonna mess around with the rest of the options here. We're gonna click the Review and Create button. And this should bring us to a summary of the options. Okay, it's warning us that we opened up SSH to the internet. Generally a bad idea, but uh, for the sake of this demo, it's, it's fine, I promise you. It's gonna automatically pick things like what network to put it in based on my, my current defaults which is all fine. Again, we skipped over all those, those options and we click the create button. And what this is going to do is it's going to submit that to uh, Microsoft Azure and it's going to then actually create us a VM based on the image that we just defined from Image Builder. So as you can see, aside from the part where we had to grant Image Builder rights to our uh, Azure infrastructure, this whole process was actually pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, and there we go. The deployment is complete. If I go to the resource, it should show me the running VM here on Microsoft Azure. There we go. All right, so there you have it. Uh, we've now created a, uh, an image using Red Hat Insights Image Builder. We've pushed it off to our cloud provider. 
And as you've seen in the demonstration here, we have lots of options for the output that we'd like that image to either be sent to or give us for download. The power of this tool is that you can take those images and run them on any platform, right? So you can push it to any of the big three cloud providers, or you can download them and run them on your own local environment. Or if you have a cloud provider where you want to build a custom image to send it out to, download that image, make your customizations, and send it up to your cloud provider. So this goes a long way into defining your standard operating environment so that you can you know, keep your standards across lots of different platforms. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.